introduction of the giver, 11-year-old Jonas lives in what seems to be a perfect community. There's no crime, hunger, poverty, prejudice, or violence. Every citizen knows exactly how to behave and what their responsibilities are. But Jonas feels apprehension about the Ceremony of Twelve, which he'll be participating in. In the rising action, Jonas lives with his mother, sister Lily, and father, a nurturer who cares for babies, or new children. Father has brought home a new child named Gabriel for extra nurturing, concerned that if the child does not develop more quickly, he will be slated for release. Jonas isn't sure what release is, but he knows that it involves leaving the community and going elsewhere. When the day of the ceremony arrives, Jonas is selected by the Council of Elders to be the next receiver of memory, the most honored title in the community. Jonas begins his training the next day. The present receiver is an old man who tells Jonas to call him the giver. He's been in that role for most of his life. His job is to be the keeper of the community's collective memory, not only from recent years, but for generations. The community gave up its memories when it began its quest for sameness, a plan that involved creating a uniform geography and climate, and discouraging individuality, including skin color and color of all kinds. Sameness also involved eliminating choice, emotions, and memories, all of which could cause unhappiness and pain. Jonas experiences seeing color for the first time and learns about love, death, war, suffering, and joy and he grows increasingly impatient with his community's sameness, an almost meaningless existence marked by a total lack of choice. Jonas learns the tragic story of the giver's daughter, who held the position before him. And in the climax of the novel, Jonas learns that release is death, and that little Gabriel would be killed. In the falling action, Jonas and the giver concoct a plan of escape from the community, and Jonas does, taking Gabriel with him. Eventually, Jonas finds a sled perched on the top of the hill as though left for him far beyond the community. In the resolution, he and Gabriel race down the hill to where he hopes the people are waiting for him with love and warmth elsewhere. There are three key characters in Lois Lowry's powerful novel, The Giver. Jonas begins the novel as a bright, inquisitive boy who's curious about what he observes, but who really doesn't question the overall structure or rules of the society he lives in. But once he begins training with the giver, Jonas becomes aware of everything the community has sacrificed in order to avoid pain and achieve a tranquil, efficient way of life. They've relinquished all memories to the care of the receiver, because memories can cause suffering. Jonas becomes increasingly frustrated with his community and eventually angry at their willingness to settle for a bland, meaningless existence. Jonas realizes that release, which he thought was just leaving the community, is a euphemism for death. Jonas runs away with Gabriel, a new child his father has been caring for, and searches for the elsewhere, where people care for each other and love still exists. The giver is the most important of the community's elders, the receiver of memories, a position responsible for storing the collective memories and history of the world, going back generations, and for advising the Council of Elders when important decisions have to be made that are beyond their experience. This burden of keeping memories has made the giver somewhat bitter and resentful of his role, feelings that grow nearly unbearable after his daughter, Rosemary, chosen at one point to be the next receiver of memories, killed herself. Through Jonas, the old man finally sees a way to force the community to take back its memories and regain both its freedom and its individuality. At the beginning of the story, Father is portrayed as a kind man and a source of affection and wise advice for Jonas and his sister. Father gravitated toward the job of nurturer when he was a youngster himself. But toward the end of the novel, Jonas realizes that Father has no real capacity for love. His complete lack of emotion and his ability to kill the innocent show how the strict control by the government can turn even an essentially gentle man into someone who can behave as if utterly lacking in humanity. Colors, the sled ride, fire and candlelight, Gabriel and the river are the central symbols in The Giver. In the quest for sameness, the leaders of Jonas's community have sought to eliminate color in all things. 
Now, the entire world appears to the citizens in shades of black and white, which symbolize the black and white nature of the community as a whole. Eventually, the giver shares the memory of a rainbow, representing the spectrum of human experiences and emotions. When Jonas first receives the memory of the sled ride, it's a wonderful, exhilarating experience. But Jonas continues to dream of the ride down that snow-covered hill, and always in the dream, it seemed as if there was a destination. The sled ride is a symbol of Jonas' journey to freedom and understanding, a symbol for both an escape from the meaningless life of the community and a return to a world that values emotions, memories, individuality, choice, and love. Fire and candlelight have a powerful effect on Jonas. He tells himself that the community was right to ban such potentially dangerous things, but deep inside, he longs for the warmth and light they provide. Subconsciously, he understands that warmth represents the feelings that come from a sense of community, human connections, and love, while light represents understanding, knowledge, and perhaps hope. Gabriel represents all the individuals in the society that are either a threat to the established order or simply unwanted because they do not fit the parameters of sameness that have been established in the community. The child is purity and innocence, laughing happily in the family dwelling and unaware of the danger he's in. He is hope personified. Finally, the river is one of the few natural features that still exists in the community ever-changing and uncontrollable, it adds small jolts of uncertainty to a community that values predictability and control. Little Caleb somehow fell into its waters and died. From that point on, the river becomes a euphemism for death or escape. The river also flows out and away from the community, subtly providing an indication that there is a way out of the rigid structure of a society there, an elsewhere. the freedom and burden of choice, the importance of memory, conformity versus individuality, and security versus freedom are the central themes in The Giver. Every person in Jonas's community knows exactly what to do and when to do it. No room for personal choice has been allowed. A special committee determines which spouses are suited to each other, which children best fit within each family unit, and even what an individual's job is within the community. Those decisions are never questioned. Jonas becomes truly aware that freedom of choice has been eliminated and rebels. Eventually, the freedom to choose even becomes the key to saving young Gabriel's life and the soul of the entire community. The importance of memory is a theme central to the novel's plot. In The Giver, control of memory has been taken to a dangerous extreme. Memories from generations past and the lessons of history have been locked away in the mind of one person, the receiver of memory. The position of receiver was created because even the community leaders realized that only with memories can there be knowledge and wisdom, and only the knowledge of history can prevent disastrous mistakes from being made again and again. Conformity versus individuality drives the novel's action. The reason for establishing sameness among the community was apparently to eliminate such things as competition, jealousy, and discrimination. If everyone is the same, there can be no conflict. It's the ultimate conformity. The end result is that there's little individuality, no creative expression, and no appreciation of those who are different. Conformity has eliminated the potential for the richness of spirit and mind, innovation and beauty that diversity can bring. Security versus freedom is highlighted by Jonas's anger and frustration. People must not blindly follow the rules of society, no matter how well-intentioned the reasons were for putting them in place. They should not be willing to trade away freedom for safety and security. Instead, individuals must be aware of and question everything about their society and their country, including the decisions of those who lead it.